Hey guys, welcome back. This is part 11 to my Demon Souls playthrough. Uh, last video, we uh, went to 3-1, uh, took out the boss, the Fool's Idol, and uh, I took a short trip into 3-2 uh, in order to uh, get a key. Uh, so today, today we're going to do 3-2 and uh, finish up the boss there, uh, as well as uh, the Archdemon, the Old Monk. Uh, but first, we're going to talk to a couple NPCs, and then I want to talk a little bit about uh, weapon upgrades, since people have been asking. So this is Yuria. Uh, she's the one that we saved uh, back a couple videos ago. She was in 1-3 uh, in the prison tower. Hello again. You saved me from great agony. I am sorry, for I cannot offer proper thanks. If you wish, however... I can teach you magic and trade for demon souls. But my witchcraft is of a dark nature and arouses suspicions. Why not try the magic of Great Sage Freak? So let's see if we can talk to her again. Are you certain you wish to learn witchcraft? It would honor me to assist one such as you, but are you sure? Okay, so obviously she is a spell vendor. Uh, right now she only has four spells. I don't know if she ever has more than that. But th notice that they're all soul spells. You can't buy them with just pure souls. You need uh, demon souls. Ignite, Firestorm, uh, Curse Weapon, and Relief. Uh, so I'm not really going to use any of these. Curse Weapon is tempting. It basically gives you like a 50% damage increase. Uh, but it also drains your health. So it's very close to power within. Uh, <clears throat> so I'll talk to her a little bit more. I don't know if she says anything else. Once I lusted after the power offered by demon souls. I ventured through the fissure into Boletaria, but became trapped in the Nexus. Then the king's executioner, Meralda, chained me up inside that tower. My thirst for demon souls is no more. On the contrary, I find such power dangerous. Do you know Yurt, the Silent Chief? He dons pitch black armor and a helmet with two sharp spikes. Yurt's presence in Boletaria has resulted in the death of many a great hero. Whatever his motives may be, he is a grave danger to us all. Do watch out for him. I cannot bear to think of harm coming to you. So she actually warned us of Yurt. Uh, I killed him last video, if you guys remember. Uh, I already knew that he was going to do this, but uh, it's interesting that she warned us. Freak wields a different type of magic from my witchcraft. Freak's magic stems from an understanding of the essence of the demon soul. While my witchcraft merely channels its energy. If the demon is cursed, so shall be the witchcraft. Freak's power comes from human potential, while mine is a dark, dependent art. Well, she explained the difference between the different types of magic. Uh, see if she says anything else. If the demon is cursed. Okay. Oh. So, oh, <clears throat> that's all we're going to get from her. Uh, I'm not going to actually use anything that she's got since I'm not doing... Uh, a mage build. So this is Sage Frake. This is the guy we rescued in a previous video. Hmm. I have a proposal for you. Could you bring your demon souls to me? As I determine more about the essence of the soul, I can teach you new magic. A demon soul is no mere amalgamation of lesser souls. You have your wits about you. Surely you understand me. Okay, so let's see what he's got. So he's got a wider uh, variety of magic. And some of it you can just buy with normal souls. Uh, but some of it obviously requires demon souls. <clears throat> this is one thing I like about the game. I think I mentioned it in a previous video. Dark Souls, almost everything, uh, every single demon soul that you get, specifically from a boss, usually makes a weapon or a shield. Uh, up, not until Manus in the DLC did we have an option to make a spell. So I really wish they would have done that in uh, Dark Souls. 
Uh, but let's see what he's got. Light weapon is the only thing I'd be interested in. Uh, so uh, we'll uh, get it. Silver Demon Soul, I think that was Penetrator. Uh, warding is, is, is uh, I guess, sort of like Iron Flesh in a way. It's a big protective spell, but it doesn't last very long. Uh, there's a lot of these. I mean, I guess I could get them, but in reality, I probably won't use them. Just showing you guys what they are. Uh, so let's uh, see what else he has to say. That witch, Yuria, is quite a compelling woman. She uses a different type of magic than I. Hers is powered by emotion. A lesser type of miracle. I wonder if it is related to her gender. I still have much to learn. Do you have a connection to the disciples? Do not pay attention to them if they speak poorly of me and my magic. Prayer is for the foolish, quaint, and soon to be dead. And heaven forbid the day you find out what their so-called God really is. I was defeated and captured by the Golden Elder beyond that dungeon. Beware of him, for he manipulates souls. He has power over dark souls, those susceptible to madness and paranoia. That's the second time I've actually seen the term Dark Souls used in this game. I know of three human leaders who became demons. <clears throat> King Alant of Boletaria, Astraea of the Valley of Defilement, and the Golden Elder of Latria. They have proven that humans can evolve to a higher state. We were wrong to assume that only demons could do demon work. He has power over... Okay, so he's talking about the old monk, which is uh, somebody we're going to be fighting here today. Uh, so I want to do some uh, leveling up. I think that I don't have enough uh, magic slots because my intelligence is only 13. So I'll probably have to upgrade my intelligence and then put the rest into magic so that my uh, light weapon does more damage. Uh, but first, we're gonna talk a little bit about the upgrade system, which to be honest with you, I don't know a lot about because I haven't used it, but I do know how it works. So let's see what we even have we can use. So I don't have many hard stones because I think I use them on the shield. Uh, I think sharp stone is my best bet. <clears throat> so, Basically, uh, the upgrade paths are similar in the way they work on Dark Souls. Uh, Sharpstone and Hardstone uh, work like uh, the Titanite in uh, Dark Souls. They're shards, large shards, chunks, and of course, uh, they call it in this game uh, Pure Stone, whereas in Dark Souls, it's the slab. Same basic idea. Uh, it's a little bit more convoluted uh, because instead of just having one type of shard upgrades all normal weapons, they have, they've basically split it into two. Uh, one is meant for like smaller bladed weapons, like katanas and daggers and rapiers and stuff. And the other one's meant for like crushing weapons, uh, blunt weapons and such. So they're, it's essentially the same idea. It's just they break it up into two. So Baldwin can do uh, the basic upgrades. So he can do anything with shard stone and hard stone, uh, and hard, wait, sharp stone and hard stone. Uh, Blacksmith Ed, which we've seen in 2-1, Who's made? He's the one who made the BBS for us, the Blue Blood Sword. He can do all the other kind of upgrades. Uh, so let's talk to him and see what we can do. Oh, actually, we need a weapon first. I don't think I have any on me. Oh. Let's drop our stuff off. Well, I'll have the parrying dagger. We'll just use that because I think it's a sharp stone. Okay. Wait, where are you? And keep in mind, like I said, I'm not all the greatest with the upgrades. I've never used a lot of them. So any Demon Souls experts, if you catch anything that's wrong that I'm saying, make sure uh, you drop a comment to explain for people that actually want to know. Can forge weapons. So we're going to upgrade weapon. Uh, the only thing we have is a Pairing Dagger. Uh, it requires one sharp stone shard. We have 33. Okay, I'm going to go to two. Uh, it requires two shards. Okay. We're going to go to three. Now it's up to four shard stone, or sharp stones. Okay, so now we have more options. So this is how it works. In Dark Souls, basically, you always go from a normal weapon to a plus five before you can upgrade it. 
Uh, in this game, the maximum is a plus 10 on a standard upgrade. So at plus 3, you start getting more options. Uh, and then again, somewhere around plus 6, plus 7, plus 8. I think it's different depending on the type of upgrade. You have another chance to do an upgrade. So from here, we can go strictly to a plus 4. Uh, so the Sharp Stone upgrade is, like I said, similar to the Titanite upgrade in that the base damage of the weapon increases and sometimes as you go higher, the scaling increases. But it pretty much keeps the weapon in a base kind of form. Uh, you'll see a quality pairing dag over there. Uh, what that does is, let me see if I can show you. There we go. Pairing dagger plus four, stat bonus is DD, and it shows uh, 91 damage plus 18. If you go to quality, it actually goes down, which I find kind of interesting. Because what, what quality does is it evens out the uh, strength and dex, but for some reason the pairing dagger is already even at D&D. &D. Uh, and what's this one? Oh, I don't have any meltstone. Oh, that breaks it down. So I guess it's only really two options. Because you can break it down, but I don't have the stone. It's called a meltstone. So I have two options, pairing plus four. We're going to do a quality just to show the difference. Okay. So now I'm going to quality uh, pairing dagger plus one. I have a feeling that it might change to like a C, C, if we keep going. Let's see. But notice, well, it hasn't got there yet. I was going to say, notice the amount that it requires to upgrade is more than Dark Souls. Uh, we're still at four and two. So here's the big difference. In Dark Souls, you only need one type of uh, shard per upgrade path. So let's say you want to do zero to plus five. It only requires nine Titanite shards. Uh, when you want to go from plus 6 to uh, plus 9, it requires only large shards. And then when you want to go from plus 10 to plus 14, uh, it requires... Actually, sorry, I think it goes to plus 10 on the large shard. But anyway, it only requires one type of shard. In Demon Souls, however, as you're noticing, it requires all the base shards underneath it. So not only do I need two chunks, I also need four shards. Uh, and then it goes up. When I get to the point where I need chunks, it's going to need... Uh, well, actually, I'm surprised there's no large stone. A large shard. I thought there was large shards. See, this is where I'm getting confused because I haven't done it in a while. I'm pretty sure that there's shards and large shards and chunks, but perhaps quality doesn't need large shards. Uh, but let's keep going. Okay, we're still, we still got plenty to go. Okay, there we go, pure clear stone. So this is the maximum upgrade on a, uh, a quality, uh, uh, quality path upgrade, I guess you call it. So how it works in Demon Souls is generally uh, you have your base upgrade. Again, it goes to, to plus three, and then you can upgrade it from there to something different, or you can go up to higher. Some uh, upgrade paths require you to go to like plus seven or so. Uh, but the secondary upgrades like quality and all the other ones, which is equivalent in Dark Souls to, let's say, fire or lightning or something like that, they only go to plus five maximum. Uh, again, very similar to Dark Souls. You know, you have a lightning plus five, although you do have a fire plus ten. So we're going to upgrade it all the way. And now let's look at it. So I was correct. Now it's C and C. So this is a, a type of weapon if you want to have uh, strength and dex together. I don't even know what that trophy just was. Uh, so that's one of the upgrade paths. So compared to Dark Souls, uh, Demon Souls is a little bit more convoluted upgrading system. Uh, and it also uses a lot more shards. Uh, I think they went a little overboard, honestly. I looked online, and it looks like like the Great Sword uh, requires 94 small shards to upgrade all the way to plus 10. I mean, that's kind of borderline ridiculous. On top of all the large shards and chunks and the pure stone that what it requires. That about running off like that? So we're going to dump this back off. Let me look at my shards again. Oh, let's drop this off. I thought there was large shards. I could be mistaken. So if, I'm, if, if I was wrong, then just kind of forget what I said about that. Oh, there are. Okay, there's shard, large, chunk, pure. So I guess some of them don't actually require large. Uh, but you'll see there's so many different types. We got uh, clear stone, gray stone, blade stone, dragon stone, sucker stone, mercury, marrow, spider, uh, moonlight. Uh, so those are all different upgrade paths. Whereas Dark Souls, sometimes they share, like Lightning just uses standard Titanite shards. Uh, this game has a separate type of shard for every upgrade path. Uh, I do like the fact in this game you get a lot of freedom. Uh, while I'm talking, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to 
burn through a lot of souls here because I want to uh, level up again. But uh, as I was saying, you do have a lot of options. And some of them ended up not being used all that much, but some of them uh, are very popular. So like the Bladestone upgrade basically gets rid of all strength uh, scaling and goes pure dex. Then there's one called Crushing, and I forget what kind of stone it uses. Uh, but what that does is get gets rid of all dex and goes pure strength. Uh, there's the Mercury Stone, which does poison. Uh, there's another stone that uh, it, it upgrades to something called Fatal. And what that does is it lowers the base damage, but it increases the critical damage for someone who likes to do a lot of uh, parrying and reposting, uh, which probably would have been good for me in this build had I not gone for a Blue Blood Sword. Uh, you've got Crescent, which is... Uh, what Crescent does is it still gives you a little bit of strength and uh, dex scaling on the weapon, but it also scales with your magic stat. And as a bonus auxiliary, uh, auxiliary effect, it gives you uh, mana regen. Uh, then you have something similar with the blessed weapon, which again, it still scales a little bit off strength and uh, with dexterity, but it also adds faith and it gives you uh, a regen ability too. Uh, the other thing is that there's also, I think it's called the, uh, the moon upgrade. Uh, also, real quick, I'm going to try to find the, uh, there we go. The, this is the blue flying dragon. We, we can't use that soul for anything but just upgrading uh, or uh, leveling up with it or just getting souls from it. You can't make anything out of it. Uh, but what was I saying? Uh, anyway, oh, blessed weapons and crescent weapons both have like an auxiliary effect. And what that does is it also upgrades as you upgrade the weapon. So your mana regen gets better as you upgrade it. Uh, same with uh, the regeneration, which I think is a really cool thing. I wish Dark Souls would have done that. Okay, so we're going to go Intelligence one more because you can see I only have one slot. We're going to go to two. Okay. Uh, I only have enough to upgrade one more. Let's see, my magic power is going to go up. Yeah, I don't need any more vitality. Let's just go magic. Uh, but I could go on and on about the upgrade system. I don't want to bore all the people that have already played the game. Uh, and there's only so much detail I can go in for the people that haven't. But in short, I think Dark Souls has a better upgrade system overall. Uh, but I think that... Uh, Demon Souls has more options, so it's kind of like a mixture of both. Hopefully the next game they'll kind of do a little bit of both. I like the fact that Demon Souls has so many different things you can do, even if some of them aren't considered that useful. The fact that you have the option is kind of cool. Dark Souls has fewer options, but they made the upgrade system uh, far more accessible and you easier to understand. So we got to remember spell. So we're going to get rid of Water Veil, and we're going to go Light Weapon. Right now, I honestly don't know if my light weapon is going to do any more damage than sticky white stuff. Uh, but at least we won't have to use any sticky white stuff. I can just cast a spell. And I already have my uh, catalyst. Now, the other thing about Dark Souls I kind of like is the fact that you have to get embers. There's no embers in this game. The only thing you have to get uh, is the, uh, the soul of the flame lurker in order to make boss weapons. But every other normal or secondary upgrade can be done just after you find uh, the shards and the blacksmith. Also, there's only two blacksmiths in this game. So I think Dark Souls made an improvement by adding more uh, blacksmiths and spreading out embers across the world and make you work a little bit harder to be able to get those upgrades. But I just wish that they would have gave you more options in the upgrade themselves. So again, any Demon Souls uh, vets, if I said anything wrong, make sure you drop it in the comments. It's about... Uh, it is 2.22 in the morning right now. I just got off work and drove all the way back home. So I might be a little bit out of it. Anyway, it's time for me to focus here because if I don't, I'm going to get myself killed. So we jumped in here last game, uh, last episode, and now we're going to actually go through, take our time a little bit because this is my favorite level. If you're just looking around, it's already got a creepy feel to it. I just love this area. Just everything about it is awesome. Okay. So last time I ran through here, there was a couple uh, souls I didn't pick up, so we're going to make sure we get everything today. I honestly don't even remember what all is in this level, so uh, I'm going to be learning along with you guys. Uh, so in general, this is basically the last level of the game to complete. I've already gone through all the other levels. Uh, 
1-4 is another level uh, where we've already kind of peeked in there. I didn't make it to the end, but I was very close to the end. Basically, there's only a little bit left uh, past what you saw before the final boss. Uh, so this is like the last new level you're going to see me do. Uh, which brings up the fact that this playthrough is actually getting close to the end. Considering this is the last level and the last Archdemon to take care of. After this, all I really have to do is uh, kill the final boss, uh, False King Alant, as well as uh, finish up uh, the Black World Tennessee events. So what I'm probably going to do after this video is go uh, offline, or go, out. I'm already offline, I mean go off camera and get myself into pure Black Tendency on all worlds. And so the next video, all I'm going to be doing is basically going to each world that, that has the event, uh, killing uh, the Black Phantom and also finding the uh, Primeval Demon. Uh, and then that's going to be pretty much it. That's really all that we got left. Uh, there's too much to do in Demon Souls in just one playthrough. I can't possibly show you every single weapon and upgrade and spell. Uh, so I've done as much as I could to kind of explain it to you guys. Uh, but in general, there's just too much to do. And I doubt I'll be wanting to do another playthrough anytime soon. Oh, that guy was running too, but... So Moonlight Stone, those are for upgrading uh, to the... I think it's just called the Moon Weapons. In fact, I think we're going to see a Moon Weapon at the end of this level. Uh, the difference between Moon and Crescent is that Crescent, uh, like I said, upgrades, uh, upgrades the weapon to be able to accept some of your uh, magic stat uh, into the damage calculation. I probably said that in a very convoluted way. Uh, but it also keeps strength index in there a little bit too. Moon, I think, completely gets rid... Actually, no, I had it backwards, my bad. Uh, Crescent is gets rid of all strength index scaling and uh, just adds magic and the ability to regenerate mana. Moon keeps dex and strength uh, scaling on top of adding magic. I don't know if there's one for faith as, as well or not. But I already know I've missed quite a few. I think there's an upgrade that adds uh, bleeding. and Which I think is a really cool thing. Because in Dark Souls, the only way to get bleed on a weapon is to have the weapon innately have bleed uh, built on it from the start. Like katanas and uh, daggers and such. But uh, in this game you can actually add bleed to a weapon that wouldn't normally have it. So this right here, this is the final way to the boss, but this uh, big tentacle thing right here, whatever you want to call it, is basically uh, the entire reason we have to go through the whole level to get that to uh, get out of the way. <clears throat> okay, I know I think I, I ran by something here. There's a drop off here. I think it's right here. Uh, the other thing to mention is not every weapon can become anything. You can't make, like, a broadsword probably into a, a bleed weapon. Oh, wait, this one's always scary because you're so close to falling off. Uh, so, yeah, it's like certain... So you can't... You probably can't make a Mesa bleeding weapon and you probably can't make, you know, certain blunt weapons into, uh, like, poison weapons. So there are limits. But the fact is you have a lot of options and you can try a lot of different things. So if I had more time, I would definitely go through and show you guys different weapons and builds, but... Uh, after this, we're going to move on to some different games. And while I'm thinking about it, we're going to upgrade our fresh spice. Okay, now that I'm done talking about that, we can concentrate a little bit. I'm probably just kind of rambling off at the mouth while I'm trying to pay attention, so... Alright, so there's these two big heart things we have to basically make drop. You saw me run by one in the previous video. Uh, this time, we're actually going to do it. Oops, I already did that. So I think I've cleared out this area. So this level really isn't as big as I thought it was. Uh, it seems big, uh, but some of the stuff that you see you can't actually access. It's not really all that big of a level in general, but I just really like the layout of it. The atmosphere is just freaking awesome. Where are you going, brother? Flamberge. So, uh, we have one of those. God, that's kind of scary. In uh, Dark Souls. In Dark Souls, I think it has bleed. I don't know about in. Here, let's look. You guys are always interested in the weapons that I get. 
Name for the way it resembles a flame. Blade is made for rending flesh, causing... Oh, okay. I guess it does have bleeding in here. I don't know how to tell on the screen. I've never paid attention. Uh, but apparently, uh, it sounds like it has some sort of bleeding effect. Unless it's just uh, part of the description. I was going to say, I thought there was a fog wall there. But I remember we already came through here once. So if you try to get this item with the fog wall up, uh, it, I've done it before, it makes you fall because the fog wall actually pushes you kind of out to the side. I have this feeling I don't have my thief in there. No, I do. Oops. So all these guys drop is... Oh, there. All these guys drop is unknown soldier souls, I think. It's pretty standard. So I don't really care about... Uh, I'm not probably going to loot every single one. Okay, gonna get a lot of spice on this level, which is gonna come in handy, because uh, casting one second chance basically uh, depletes my entire mana pool, and my mana pool right now is relying on uh, the silver the silver catalyst and uh, the silver coronet. If I didn't have those two items, I would have less mana right now. Okay. So again, we've already been through here. Uh, I'm going to go across this elevator this time and see if there's anything here. just love the layout over here. Alright. Yep, I figured there was something over here. Yeah, I have a ton of these. I have enough of these now, I think, where I can literally just continually die in each world until I get it pure black. So again, uh... After this video is finished, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go through every single level and get myself to pure black. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do in the next video is go through and take care of all my pure black events. And uh, I don't know if I'll have enough time to do everything. Uh, I might only have one video left. I might have two. Depends on how long it takes me. Considering all I have to do is go kill like one specific black phantom and then find the primeval demon. I may not show the entire thing. I might fast forward myself getting to each area. I will have to see. Okay, so I already noticed one mistake I made. There's only one of those heart things, not two. Uh, but there's different chains holding it up. I knew there was. you had to do something multiple times. Okay, so we've already been up here. That led to the area where I got that special key, which is why I screwed up and uh, went down a yurt first because I wasn't thinking. Uh, and this area right here is where we found yurt last time. So I already think I got what that was down by yurt. There's two cages here, and there's a cage with uh, where yurt is, or where yurt was. Uh, I don't remember if there's any specific reason why one cage is better than the other. So we're just going to go on this one. Uh, the only thing is, if you go down to the next level, you can't get back up. So if you actually kill Yurt in the cage or don't let him out, you actually can't continue in the level. I think you have to basically gate out because there's no way down from Yurt's area but in the cage. So it's one of those kind of, it's not really a game-breaking bug, but it is kind of a, a screw-up where you can get yourself uh, stuck. Okay, so we are in a little swamp area here. And there's quite a few little treasures out here, so I'm going to try to get them all. You got these creepy little dudes here. Faces on them. These big tentacles, to my knowledge, can't hurt you. Okay, Fragrant Ring. Uh, that's the ring I started the game with. It gives you mana regen, which is why I said that the royalty... Ooh, I don't want to mess with this dude. Actually, you know what? We are going to buff our weapon and see just how much damage this thing does, because I want to take this guy out and hopefully not die in the process. I'd say we did pretty good there. Mercury Stone. So, uh, I don't know if I can see the damage of my weapon while I have my spell on. Magical attack. If that plus 61 is mostly due to scaling, or how much of that is actually due to... Uh, my spell that's engaged right now. I really don't know how to tell a difference. 
Anyway, uh, we're going to try to get all the treasure in here and hopefully not miss anything. I don't know how much of it's actually important. I do know that you can actually run up these things. I don't remember if there's anything important here, but it is possible to run up. Now, let's see. Who knows? Maybe there's actually something up here. I know that if I fall, I'm probably going to die. Uh, I'm thinking that maybe this is not a good idea. <laughs> Let's try. Oi, 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 oi. Yeah, that was probably a wasted trip. But it's cool. You never know. Games like this, you never know what they're going to throw at you. So it's kind of cool that you have the idea to even check that. There is one area where... You can kind of do a little bit of a shortcut. You can climb it over. You can climb up one of those and jump to uh, the area we need to go to next without having to go on uh, the, the the docks or whatever you want to call these. All right, so we're going to stay out in the swamp until uh, I stop seeing items down here. Uh, is that the cage that I took down, or is that another one to go back up? I'm not sure. See what else is over here. I think the one I was this is the one I was talking about. You can actually climb this tentacle and get up onto that ledge right there. I don't know if it's designed that way or if it's just kind of a little one of those little tricks that uh, From didn't really design into the game. It's not really important. It doesn't really save you much, I guess, but it's kind of cool. Uh, so I'm not seeing anything else, but there's some areas back here that seem secluded. So there's probably something back here. Oh, not this way. So I'm not doing like the other levels where I'm trying to run through it quickly. I am trying to take my time because I know you guys kind of like me to go through era areas more thoroughly than I tend to do. Okay, yeah, I'm not seeing much else. I need to find my way back. Alright. I know there is a ramp somewhere. Oh, so that was funny. Their head just magically lops off. The good thing is I can one-shot these dudes. Uh, I, I don't know if it's the big ones or the little ones. One of them can actually uh, spit out, like, acid. Which I think either poisons you or damages your gear. Which I don't remember which. And honestly, I hopefully don't find out. Okay, is there anything over here? Nope. I honestly don't remember how the network of docks works, but I think I'm doing pretty good here. Nice. Ah, I'm already heavy. I don't know how I'm already heavy. Oh, probably because I'm using heavy armor. Alright, let's see what it is. I might have to drop something off, because I don't know if I want to run around without the thief string on. I'm Herculean Strength... Ring of disease resistance, okay. Wow, I really am full of a simple point two item is uh, filling me up. So you know what? We are going to drop the flamberge we just grabbed. Uh, because it's probably really heavy. It's not super heavy, but it's somewhat heavy. Oh, I forgot to show you guys. Uh, I picked up the rune shield and the rune sword. Both of which uh, are what Ostrava uses. Uh, there's two chances to get him in the game. This one is guaranteed. You also have to fight Ostrava as a black phantom. And uh, we're going to drop him because I'm not going to use him. Uh, and I think he drops him again. So you can get two per playthrough. But where you fight him as a black phantom, there is a chance uh, that he can fall off the, the ledge. And I don't think... In this game, I don't think some NPCs, if they fall off a ledge, you can just start uh, or restart the game and they'll just magically be there. I don't think it works uh, in demons on everything. I think certain enemies do. Apparently Yurt will drop his armor even if he falls off. But not all NPCs or enemies are uh, built like that. Okay, so it looks like we're pretty much getting everything out of the swamp. Because we're almost ready to move on to the next area. Uh, I possibly could have missed something. Well, let's go down here because I see an enemy. And I don't think we went on to this uh, part of the dock yet. But then again, I'm not seeing anything over here anyway. And apparently, those elevators go up and down. I thought you had to get in one. 
Alright, I'm not seeing anything else, so let's try to get back up on the dock. Uh, which is, uh, over there. I gotta find my way out of here again. Oh, right there in front of my face. Uh, this way? <laughs> wow. Didn't see that guy. Yeah, so I'm already getting myself lost in here. I'm sure you vets are probably scratching your heads frustrated. <laughs> but at least I'm taking my time this time. So yeah, it looks like I've cleared out this area pretty good. I think we're done here. It's just a matter of me finding uh, how to get back out. Man, I was so close to it. Somehow I got turned around. Alright. Apparently it's not this way. Probably on a different set of docks, which is why I'm getting myself confused here. I thought I saw some loot, and it was just uh, the fire. Oh, there is loot right here. I thought I saw something glowing. Augite of Guidance. Again, I think that's like a prism stone. Alright, here we go. We're back again. Remember, when you guys are watching this, it's probably brighter than it is in my game. I don't crank my gamma up to make the game more visible. I like to keep it kind of dark. Uh, I think it's better for the atmosphere of the game. Plus, I don't really like when games look all washed out. If they're meant to be dark, I like to keep them dark. It's a little bit more realistic to me. Okay. So yeah, we're done in the swamp. Ooh, there was one more I didn't see. So these guys drop mercury stone, the poison one. Alright, it's so a couple things over here. I knew there was quite a bit of loot down here. I just wasn't sure what it was. What I should have done, since I already have such a weight problem, is dropped off all my extra rings. And since I have multiples. I think you can get like three thief rings in one playthrough. And two of a lot of the other. I have two fragrant rings now. Uh, two rings of disease resistance and flame resistance. Uh, Dark Souls, it was hard to get more than one ring of any type in one playthrough. Uh, and this one, they kind of overload you. I think there is a mind flare up here, so I gotta be careful. Ooh, and it's a black phantom one. So I wanna show you guys something. These guys are easy to strafe around. That's their one negative. Once you're behind them, they're pretty much screwed. The problem comes when you're in a narrow walkway and you can't get behind them. Uh, which is going to happen here shortly. Uh, you have to fight a couple of those guys before you make it to the old king, and there's no way to get behind them, so you pretty much have to fight them straight up. Uh, there was the spit. Again, I'm not sure what that does, but whatever it is, it can't be good. He had a little buddy here. I didn't see him. Okay, we peek around here. I think that down there is where we just were. The crystal lizard, which is a oh man, that was close. Oh, apparently he's hitting me with a little forked tail back there. I'm trying to hit me. Yep, that guy is like a centipede man. In fact, I think their names are something similar to that. Kind of creepy looking creature, though, I tell you. Alright. There might have been a trick around here in order to get past one of these tentacles to get to another item, but I don't remember. Okay, so enough of that. We've moved past uh, the swamp area, and now we're going to go back into the tower areas. Okay. I was waiting for him to come down, but apparently uh, he changed his mind. I don't want to get surrounded, so I'm trying to kill these guys when they're close. Just in case. Uh, they aren't doing all that much damage to me right now. But again, I think it's because we're in pure white tendency. Uh, that's the cool thing I like about this game, too. For doing challenge runs, uh, you can actually really make it hard for yourself. Uh, you could do an SL1 run, 
Uh, but you can also make that more difficult by simply... Uh, that looks like that was it. I'm not going to get that because I probably don't want to use it. I think that's worth like two or 400 souls. Wow. That was so close. <laughs> I was running off of the mouth and lost uh, my focus. Uh, but anyway, you could do some challenge runs in this game, which is kind of cool. You could go through SL1 in Pure Black Tendency, where everything is tougher. Uh, that would be a pretty cool run to do. Uh, I wish Dark Souls had the option. The one thing about Dark Souls I always wish that they would have is a voluntary Black Phantom mode, where you can play through the game, uh, basically the entire game being uh, invaded by the Black Phantoms, like a Gravelord curse. Uh, but to this day, I've, I've had a Gravelord curse before, but I've, I've so few of them, it's just like uh, I barely even remember them. I think I saw the, uh, what are they called, the Barnank Knight in uh, the parish. I think that's like one of the only Black Phantoms I've ever seen, sadly. But the, the option to turn that on would be freaking awesome. So in Demon Souls, you basically have that option. Great, more of those guys. Okay, so basically we've done what we needed to do. Uh, and now we just need to go back to the starting area. I'm trying to remember if this is the right way. Uh, even if it's not, there's something down here. Uh, this is the right way. So you can't go backwards in this, in this area. You have to just kind of go back this way. And there was loot down there when we grabbed it. So this is back to the very, very beginning again. In fact, uh, we can get up to the archstone somewhere over here. Right there, I can see it. So this is right where we started. So we basically just did this big, humongous loop. And now we're going to go back the same path we started, where the first uh, change of the heart was, except we're going to be able to go past where we couldn't go before. Uh, but first, there's another little area that opened up. There's a lot of treasure down there. You saw a little cutscene at the, ba at the very end. It showed the bottom. Uh, we're going to go down there now. I don't exactly remember what's down there, but I think there's a couple actually good items. I think there's something like a gold mask. Which I think is the final piece. <sighs> Didn't see that guy. To the uh, that rogue set that I got in the last video. I think it's the matching headpiece for that since that set didn't come with one. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Oi. <laughs> I didn't have my hand on the attack button at the time. Ah, nice jumping attack. Alright. So this is what is shown in the cutscene. This is this area. Alright, so what do we got? There it is. The gold mask and the epi rapier. I don't know what the rape here is, but I know that the gold mask... Oh, there it is. I almost didn't think I had it on. It literally is a mask. Yeah, I think that goes with the rogue set. Uh, but we don't want to wear that because... Oops. We need to uh, keep our mana above 100, or else I can't cast uh, a second chance. Okay. Stored hero soul. Stone of ephemeral eyes. Yeah, I was saying earlier on, there, there's quite a bit in this in the game, so... Going to pure black isn't all that tough. 
So I think that's it. And we could have got to pure black a lot easier had I actually killed the NPCs. Like after I talked to Skurver, or Skurvier, I actually don't remember which it is. Uh, I could have simply killed him, and I think that it would have changed my world tendency. But I could be wrong, it might have just been character tendency. I honestly don't know for a fact. Sometimes I look this stuff up online. Oh, I guess I could have went through the whole time. Um, I don't always look it up online, so sometimes I'm guessing. Uh, but that's what the Demon Soul Vets are watching for, because they can catch my mistakes. Alright, so now we're done with all the side stuff. We're basically uh, heading to the boss now. Uh, the boss of this level was probably, out of all the bosses I fought in this game, I think they gave me the most trouble. By most trouble, I mean it probably took me five or six times fighting him to actually kill him. Uh, because uh, I just didn't know their moves very well, and you have to fight two of them. This is basically the gargoyle fight of uh, Demon Souls. Except I think it's a little bit more dangerous because you're on a narrow walkway, and so dodging is dangerous because you could fall off pretty easily. The same basic idea. You start out fighting one, uh, then after you do so much damage or so much time passes, the second one shows up. The main difference, however, is because the Thief Ring works on bosses in this game, it trivializes some even boss encounters, which is something they didn't do in Dark Souls. Dark Souls, uh, the Fog Ring didn't work on um, bosses. It worked for some boss encounters. I was being quiet there. I was focusing. Uh, like, it works for Capra Demon. Because you can make the dogs not see you, which will make that encounter easier. But no boss that I know of is fooled by the fog ring or hidden body. In this game, however, the thief ring is actually useful against bosses. Because if you get far enough away, they do kind of lose track of you. Uh, in fact, it happens actually in uh, against these guys. Ooh, there is something here. Okay. Alright, this is the fog door, I think. But uh, there's one more item to get. Old Spice. Alright. So I think we're good to go. I'm going to cast my light weapon after I come inside, uh, and hopefully that'll uh, help us take the first one down quicker. Uh, but before that, I'm going to pause the game here real quick. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. I usually take care of business before I play, but uh, I had some coffee on the way home, so it's not helping. So these guys, uh, like I said, dodging him is very, very dangerous. In fact, uh, I should probably just try to block. I, I think you can block a lot of their stuff. They have a few attacks. Um, you'll probably be able to see most of them. Uh, what's he going to do? Oh, he's almost dead, actually. He is. No, no, I thought he was dead. Get down. There you go. So, yeah, this weapon uh, upgrade is pretty nasty. And that's not even fully... Oi! See? God, i got to stop myself from dodging. That is some dangerous shit. I guess I could just try dodging backwards. Yeah, I think I read that you can block... Most of their attacks, except that attack right there, you can't block. But everything else was probably pretty blockable. Uh, that broke my guard, but I didn't take any damage. Again, Dark Silver Shield, very good against magic attacks. Alright, let's fight him up here. Come on, brother. Ooh, cut his tail off. 
Now, you don't get any weapons from cutting his tail off, but it does stop his uh, homing, uh, whatever you call it, homing magic attack. God, this is going to get me killed just trying to dodge everything. Now he's really tearing me up. Yeah, so uh, this is part of the reason it's a dangerous fight. My instinct is to dodge, and it's not always a good idea. Okay, so I know there's at least one item here. I thought there was another item up here. Let's double check. Oh, maybe that was the only one. I know there is a moon sword out here. I'm pretty sure. Uh, it just might be right here. Oh, man, this makes me nervous getting this. There we go. No, I... Let me double check. I'm pretty sure there is a, uh, a moon weapon here. Let me double check one more time. Unless I picked it up and didn't realize it. Maybe I wasn't paying attention. No. Nope. Let's look one more time. I thought there was another weapon here. Uh, I want to double check just to make sure. When I was fighting, I might have missed it on the first uh, trip. Uh, I don't know where it would be, but I want to double check just in case. Alright, I don't see it. If it's right in front of my eyes, guys, I'm sure you'll tell me about it. There, haha. <laughs> I knew it, see? There it is, Moon Short Sword. So again, the moon is the one where... In fact, let's look at it. Since I talked all about weapon upgrades, let's see what it is. So it has E, E, and C. Uh, so it still has a little bit of strength and deck scaling, and then obviously a C in magic. Where I believe if you get a Crescent Falcon, or a Falchion, that it probably makes uh, strength and dexterity completely nothing, and just makes uh, magic like B or something like that. Probably up to A. All right. So, uh, let's go back to the Nexus real quick. I'm not actually going to die purposely this time. Because now I don't care if I die in any level. I need to make this level go down. Uh, so it actually makes sense to just stay human right now. Let me drop my stuff off real quick. Just have it. Thank you. Deposit... Uh, moon short sword, P rapier, gold mask. Oh, that's why. I hadn't got rid of all my armor yet. I thought I dropped everything off. Okay, that's why I was so heavy. We are indebted to Again, my bad. Alright, let's uh, spend our souls real quick, just in case the worst happens. The soul, soul of the mind, key to life's ether. Right, that's all I can do. All right, so let's go fight the boss. Now, the thing about this boss fight is if you play online, you actually get a chance to fight against another player, which is very unique, and I, I really missed it out of Dark Souls. Uh, if you drop your sign down in this area, whether it be the red, white, or blue, I believe you have a chance to become the boss. Uh, if I was online, I would do that. I would be the boss once. But it, in all honesty, is highly unfair because there's no level limit. And, uh, oh, cutscene.
Okay, so as I was saying, uh, it could be a very unfair fight, depending. If you go in there with your level 120 PvP build, uh, maxed out stat, uh, armor and items and everything, uh, you can make short work of a lot of newer players. So it kind of sucks to an extent, but it does make it a little exciting and fun. But if you're a new player coming through here the first time, I recommend doing it offline. Uh, the only good thing is, if you want to get that weird hat, the Custard Tornado, uh, you can, uh, I think you can only get it if you play as the boss. If you just fight this boss normally, you're not going to get that, uh, that item. So it kind of forces you to be able to be the boss once. So I put on the Grave uh, Robber uh, ring because uh, there's some Black Knight uh, Mind Flares up here, and uh, the Grave Robber Ring works a little bit better against Black Phantoms than just a Thief Ring. But the only thing is it doesn't work at all against normal enemies. So this is the only part of this whole area that I'm actually concerned with. And in fact, I don't need a Clean Ring anymore, so... Uh, I don't even know what to put on, to be honest with you. Oh! Eternal Warrior's Ring. Perfect. Uh, so this is Stamina Regen. This will come in extremely handy. There he is. When is he going to see me? Now. Alright, we're just going to have to go for the dodge. Uh, I tried to dodge and I was in the middle of an attack. Not good. Well, at least you get to see the attack now. And I made the big mistake of forgetting to cast Second Chance when I came back uh, from the Nexus. Alright, we're going to get this bastard now. That's what I should have done in the beginning. I should just dodge under that thing. I'm a little bit more uh, comfortable with my dodges now. When I first started playing, I was not trusting of my dodge timing, but uh, now I'm not so bad at it. Man, these guys are tough. I don't know what that was. I'm guessing it was a crystal lizard. I never even saw it. I just saw the uh, bar. Okay, so before we go in there, since we got light weapon, let's put it to use. And I get two casts of it. I know what you're thinking. That was stupidly easy. And you're right. He's actually not one of the tougher bosses. He tends to dodge a lot. And you notice that he had those uh, homing soul... Homing Soul Mass, Homing Soul Missiles, whatever. Uh, those can be a pain, but he's really easy to kill if you just uh, stun lock him. So that was pretty much it. I'm sure that was super anticlimactic for you guys. I apologize for that. I didn't expect it to go that quick, but uh, he's not all that tough. Anyway, that's going to cut uh, the end of this video here. Uh, next video, like I said, I'm going to go pure black uh, off screen so that you guys don't have to see me die like 13 times. Uh, and then we'll go through and do all the pure black. And if we have time, we'll finish off the game. If not, we'll uh, make one more video. So until next time, guys, take it easy.